have. Um, I told her, I said, you know, I suddenly feel self-conscious that I'm not sitting right. She goes, well, this is the place to feel self-conscious. So we just, we started by sitting up. And she said, I want you to always be aware of your stomach being tucked. I want you to be aware that your shoulders are back and you have good posture. I'm going to push down through your shoulders. Okay, and I just want you to notice how that feels on your spine. It's kind of tight. Okay, now come up tall. Come up tall, right there. Now, let me push down. What does that feel like? It's a lot stronger. Stronger? Yeah. Any pain when I push down? No. Okay, good. This is a position we want you to try and stay. I want you to stay tall through your low back. Let your shoulders relax down and back. Okay, bring them down and back. There you go. There you go. In this position, the muscles associated with your neck and your neck pain are in more of a relaxed position instead of being forward where they're on so much tension. Okay? So you really want to practice shoulders down and back. Stay up tall. Now, the most important thing, mm -hmm. I want you to think belly button to your spine. Belly in. All the time. When you sleep, that's you don't have to. But when you walk, you get out of the car, you go up the stairs, pull open a door. Every time, I want you to think stomach in. Okay. Now until you die. What that's how it, long. What if I can't breathe? Or? Okay. Now, this muscle is actually quite different from the muscle you breathe with. So I want you to practice just pulling low, pulling low. Not so much that you're holding your breath, not with your chest, but just pull in here. Good. Just like that. Activate it. When you're in the car, I want you to go in, out, in, out with your stomach. Now this muscle actually goes around and it attaches to your spine. It actually attaches to your back. Unlike the muscle that goes from here, from your sternum down to your pubic bone, it does not attach to your spine. And the muscle that comes straight down the front that everybody does with crunches, that does not help stabilize your back. Okay? So stay up tall, stomach in, relax your shoulders down and back. Now, this is the posture I would like you in all the time. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to maintain that. Maybe six months from now you will. Until then, I want you to get a towel, roll it up. When you get in the car, when you sit for a long time editing, whatever you do when you spend a lot of time sitting, I want you to place it in your low back area. Okay. Now it's going to serve two purposes. When you get tired and you slouch down, right. it's going to remind you, oh, I need to be up here. And also when you slouch down, it's going to prevent you from slouching all the way. Okay, so it's going to re reduce some of the stress on your back. Shoulders down and back. I guarantee you will, sooner than later, feel a lot of tension yeah, I do and up and down the yeah. spine right here. And it's going to be very fatiguing for you because now I've asked you to use those muscles. In this position, there's not much active. No. I need you to be up here in this position to activate no, go these. Away after We're going to teach some simple exercises in order to improve your posture and increase your strength. I say to myself when I'm walking, when I'm sitting, when I'm in my car driving, belly button to spine, shoulders back, um, I carry myself differently. And when I don't do it, I find that I'm not as comfortable. And then she gave me exercises to do, exercises and stretches, and just said, do this for a week, two times a day, adjust your habits. Take um, some kind of towel or roll and put it behind your back when you're studying and when you're sitting there in class. So I started to do all that. The first exercise you're going to do is called marching. You're going to lie down on your back and just like during the postural exercises, the most important part of the whole exercises is to bring your belly button back in towards your spine. I want you to squeeze the belly button in towards your spine, push your back down flat into the table. And I want you to march with your right leg so it comes about two inches off the ground. Switch to the left. Now the most important part of doing this exercise is keeping the pelvis stable. I don't care if you do two, I don't care if you do 30. I want you to do as many as you can until the muscles around your trunk fatigue and you can't hold it stable. And you'll know because your hands are on the bones of your hips and as soon as you start to feel movement there, that's when you need to stop. I want you to spend four to five minutes a day working on exercises to help stay strong in the trunk. When you can do it the whole way through, if it's too easy and you're able to stay solid through your pelvis, the next progression, instead of just marching up and down, is to lift your leg and straighten it out and then come back and switch again, right, left, right, left. And I only want you to put your leg out as far as you can, keeping your back down on the table 
and your pelvis stable. The next step in the progression is to lift your legs up off the table so your knees are pointed straight up at the ceiling. And then from this position, instead of lifting up, I want you to drop your leg down toward the table. And again, switch right, left, right, left. And you can see, keep that belly button in tight. As soon as you start to lose it and you can't stay stable, then take a break. But I want you to again build so that you can do this holding the pelvis stable for at least four to five minutes a day working on keeping that belly button in tight. Before we go any further, are you slumping again? Sit up straight, stomach in. The exercise you're going to do laying on your stomach is called the prone straight leg raise. First of all, make sure you put a pillow underneath your stomach so you don't hyperextend your back. I don't want there to be a huge curve in your back so that it's real deep in that direction. I want the same natural curve of your back so you can use a pillow to help support that. Again, hands are right on the hip bone so you can feel for movement of your pelvis. Your stomach is in tight, belly button back towards your spine the whole time. Then, holding that position, you're going to lift so your knee comes about two to three inches up off the floor. Hold it for a five count and switch legs. And again, you will alternate which leg you're going to, keeping your stomach tight and making sure that as you lift your leg, you can't feel the bones of the pelvis coming into your fingertips. That means that you're not holding it strong enough. When you can't hold it anymore, take a break. That means you're fatigued. Again, work on this exercise for two to three minutes. Stomach is nice and tight. Fingers are on the pelvis, holding for a five count, right to left, right to left. The first exercises that I did looked initially like they were going to be simple. But when we did the repetitions, I realized I was really, I was going to be using muscles, particularly stomach muscles, that I'd never used before in my life. The very first time, I have to be honest, I was, oh, I don't want to do this. I want a pill. I want it to be over with quickly. The first time I started the exercises out at home, I was totally exhausted. I've been doing exercises for years with weights and um, all kinds of stretching, but this was just exhausting. I, I um, really had to stick with it and not, get, uh, not give up. Now let's do some exercises to help decrease the stress in your neck and get strong between your shoulder blades. The first exercise is a stretch for the muscles around your neck. What you're going to do is take your hand and put it behind your back so that your shoulder is nice and stable. You're going to start by tilting your head away toward the side and down until you feel a stretch throughout the neck. You may have to tilt your head down a little more. It may be a little bit more to the side. Whatever position you can get into where you feel the most stretch through this area is just fine. I want you to hold that stretch for 30 seconds, three times, several times per day, any time you feel tension in your neck. Now let's do a couple exercises to help you get strong back in between your shoulder blades to support your posture. Then she stood me up and she had me lift uh, two pound weights or three pound weights, um, kind of like over my, just kind of over my head. And I'm ex I was exhausted. I'm used to lifting, you know, 20 or 30 pounds and I couldn't believe it. And she had me do like three sets of 30 seconds. As with the other exercises, the most important thing is to keep good posture. Your stomach is in towards your spine. You're going to start with your shoulder blades out at, right out at your sides and your shoulder blades squeezed back together. Push up toward the ceiling, maintaining that position of your shoulder blades throughout. So you're just going to push up and down. Three sets of 15 with whatever weight that you can find around the house. If you don't have weights, that's fine. You can use cans of soup or vegetables or whatever you have around the house that weighs a couple of pounds. If you have start to experience any pain or fatigue during this exercise, Go ahead and stop, even if you don't get to number 15. The numbers aren't as important as it is to maintain good form throughout. The second exercise you're going to do is called shoulder abduction. You're going to start with your arms extended at 90 degrees, your shoulder blades squeezed together, and lift up until you get to 150 degrees, and back down. And don't drop down below 90 degrees. Your shoulder blades are pinched back and together the whole time, and you're not letting these come up and pinch towards your ears. If you do, that means your muscles are fatigued. Stop and take a break. And then I did the exercises, and they hurt, and it was hard. In the beginning, I was thinking, oh, this isn't going to do anything. 
Um, but in reality, it was the best thing that could have happened. For those of you who currently are not experiencing any symptoms, please use these exercises as a preventative measure. This is the key to a strong and healthy back. Remember, sit up tall, shoulders down and back, stomach 